this video I'm going to show you how I make my own stainless steel brake lines like you see here for use on bicycles or you can use the exact same procedure which is going to be outlined in this video to repair broken throttle cables. Sometimes the end will pull off and then there's no way to put it back on and the only thing you could do is go out and buy a new one and more than likely get ripped off in the process. Now I'm going to show you a way that I came up with to replace the end so it's extremely strong and it will not pull out. I had a friend of mine whose motorcycle the end pulled off by the carburetor and I replaced that for him and it never came out. If you follow this procedure and use the exact same materials that I'm using you should have the exact same results. Now the stainless steel cable that I used here I picked up at Home Depot believe it or not and it's non-magnetic stainless is, which is exactly what I wanted. I don't want to worry about this rusting out on my bike because I go to the beach a lot. So I used non-magnetic stainless steel and the material that I used to melt around the end of the cable is this material right here. It's a brazing rod. It's made by Harris. It's Stay Silv 6. 6% 6 silver. This is available up to 15% silver for added strength. This is the exact same brazing rod that I used when I installed central air systems. It's very strong stuff. Now you're also going to need something to melt this rod in. You could use something like this, a graphite crucible. This is designed to tolerate thousands of degrees, maybe five, six thousand degrees. It's a jeweler's crucible. And the only problem is if I melt it in here, I end up wasting too much because of the, the volume that's inside this crucible. So I thought of another way of doing it instead of using graphite. Now instead of using the crucible, I came up with this. I took a carbon rod out of a heavy duty d size cell battery, a carbon zinc battery. And after I took it out, I drilled a cavity inside right here. What I did is I drilled a small hole in the center, which is about twice the diameter of the cable that I'm using, the stainless cable. And after I drilled that down a little deeper than the larger hole, then I took a larger drill bit and I drilled all the way out, but I didn't want to destroy the wall around the edge. You need that wall. Once you heat this to the point where it's glowing red hot, we're going to put the end of this cable folded over inside that hole and the folded over part with the end of the cable is going to be embedded in the whole molten mass of this brazing rod you see right here. So once this is red hot I will put the rod into it. All of this brazing rod will melt into the cavity and make a nice little ball. I will then take the folded over end of the stainless steel wire, insert it down into the hole and the rest of the molten material will solidify around the wire. You will not be able to pull that out because that loop, in order to be pulled through, you would have to compress that loop to get it to go through the hole and that's not going to happen. So the end of the loop is going to be embedded inside the molten brazing rod. You're going to have a little loop sticking out the back side and that's it. It'll be extremely strong. Once this is all drilled out to the proper diameters, You'll take about an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch of the end of the cable, fold it over nice and tight, and you're going to shove the loop that's folded over inside the hole. Now you don't want this hole drilled too deeply. You want the end of the loop where it's been cut and folded over to be embedded in the mass of molten brazing material. Once that's cooled, it will lift right out, and then you will not be able to pull that end off. It'll be very secure. So this could be used for a lot of different projects that you're working on. You may need a custom sized cable with very strong ends and now you will know how to make that. So let's get started. Now the first thing I'm going to do is take the end of the cable, take some 400 grit sandpaper, just rough it up and clean it a little bit. The last quarter of an inch, last half inch. Once that's done I'm going to take a little bit of 90% rubbing alcohol 
clean off any oily residue that may be left behind. Now remember, we're not going to be fusing this wire to the brazing rod. The brazing rod is going to encapsulate the very end of the wire which you folded over into a tight loop. Once the cable is placed inside the molten material, it'll flow all around the crevices and little spots inside the folded loop. And then once it solidifies, you will not be able to pull it out because it's filling all these little spaces and then you'd have to actually pull the loop to get it to go through the end. So it's a very secure connection and that's how it's going to be done. So let me just sand this a little bit more. Now I'm going to take the 90% rubbing alcohol, just clean away any oily residue. All right, let me just wipe that off. That looks good. Dry it. Now I'm going to fold over the end using the needle nose. Just grab it like that. Do a nice fold. All right, that's good to go. You're just going to try it out, make sure it fits into the hole like that perfectly right there. So I'll pull that back out. Make sure this is nice and level so when the rod melts it leaves a nice rounded dome and it's not leaning to one side. So just try and straighten it up. It looks crooked in the camera but it is pretty damn level. Here we go. Very, very hot. Back off a little bit. And let that cool. All right, that came out excellent. You can see all the molten material encapsulated the stainless wire, and it's done so extremely well. Do not put too much of the molten material in here, because once you slide the wire in, it will displace some, and it'll fall out on the floor and make a mess. So just make it slightly bubbled over. Now when you drilled out the carbon rod, just make sure that the smaller hole in the center is no more than about a sixteenth of an inch deeper than the larger hole that you drilled. You want the wire to go a little lower, but you don't want it all the way sticking out on the opposite side. And just make sure that the loop end is securely encapsulated in that molten material. Now once this cools, I will extract it from the carbon rod and you'll have a perfect end which will not pull out. I have not had any of these pull out yet. Okay, this is the end result that you can see here. The way this loop is embedded inside the brazing material, it makes it extremely, extremely difficult to ever be able to pull it through because you'd have to curve that loop to get it to go through and that's not going to happen. But that's it. That's about as good as you're going to get for a homemade cable end. There is no longer any reason for you to be throwing away expensive cables on your motorcycle or car when you can repair the end like you see here. Give it a shot. It's easy to do. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you for watching.